So again, what this shows us is the amount of electric field that is the net amount of electric field that is exiting the surface is proportional to the amount of charge that's enclosed, but only the amount of charge that's enclosed. It's not um, the net amount for the surface is not affected by the amount of charge that's outside the surface, because anything that's coming in from outside the surface is eventually going to exit. And we could show the same thing for a negative charge. If you have a negative one Coulomb test charge here, well, here we would say that the net amount of electric field lines that is exiting is negative four, because nothing is exiting, everything is only entering. So if we're considering the net amount that, ex that is exiting, a mathematician would call that negative four, because this is entering in the negative one, negative one, negative one. But still, the amount of electric field that's exiting or ex entering here, again, depends just on the amount of charge that was enclosed by the surface. So let's try to get a mathematical concept for measuring how much electric field is escaping through a surface. We want to measure how much electric field is escaping through a surface. That's what's going to be called the electric flux, how much electric field is fluxing through the surface. Uh -huh. So now we have a new concept. I think this is the only new concept that we'll need this week, actually. Electric flux, and we're building on the old concept of electric field. Do you have to remember from lecture what the symbol is for electric flux? Um, no, I don't remember. Now we're going to use a Greek, excuse me, a Greek letter. Oh, right, okay. So this is the uh, Greek letter capital phi. I think you could also pronounce it capital phi. We can't use F because that's being used for force. We can't use E because that's being used for field. Here we have another F concept. Uh, phi kind of sounds like maybe the Greek letter for F. It sounds like an F phi for F. So in any case, here's the symbol. Now, this is going to measure the amount of electric field that or is exiting the surface, or the net amount that's exiting the surface. So what should it depend on? Well, suppose that the electric field becomes stronger. Do you think that that should increase or decrease phi? Increase. If there is a greater electric field, it makes sense that more of it will be exiting the surface. And we would see that in our pictures because remember when the electric field is stronger, that must be because the electric field lines are closer to each other. And if they're closer to each other, more of them are going to be passing through each portion of the surface. So should electric field go in the numerator or denominator for this concept? Now, remember this is a closed surface, even though I can only draw a two-dimensional cross-section. These really represent three-dimensional surfaces. So we can talk about the surface area of those three-dimensional surfaces. Well, if the surface area increases, would that tend to increase or decrease the amount of electric field that's getting out from it? Uh, increase. Because there's just more space. Yeah. There should be a positive relationship between area and um, the electric field. The bigger the, the, the bigger the, the surface you're talking about, the more electric field lines can pass through it. Holding E constant, I should say. If we hold E constant, um, but consider it a greater area, then you would think that um, more electric field lines would be getting out of it. So should area be in the numerator or the denominator here? The numerator. Right. In fact, there isn't anything in the denominator for this concept. Both of these things have a direct relationship on phi. In fact, they're both directly proportional. If you double E, you would double phi. Or if you double the area, you would double phi. Now remember that electric field is a vector, so we can think about breaking it into components. 
well, which component of the electric field counts as entering or exiting the surface? Should we focus on the portion of the electric field that's perpendicular to the surface or the portion of the electric field that's parallel to the surface? Uh, perpendicular? Yeah, that's right. That's a little hard for me to draw, but maybe I'll just draw it like this to start with. So if we think about this electric field line, this electric field line is passing perpendicular to this right-hand face, and it really is exiting um, this surface here. But what about, say, this electric field line that is parallel to this top face? Well, this electric field line that's parallel to this top face is neither exiting it nor entering it. So I'm not very good at drawing these three-dimensional pictures. But the point is that if you go perpendicularly through a face, that should count as exiting or exiting, entering or exiting the face. Yeah. But if you're just moving parallel to a face, you're neither exiting nor exiting it. So all that really should matter to us is the component of the electric field that is perpendicular to the surface. What do you do if the electric field has one component that's parallel to the surface and one component that's perpendicular? Well, you should only pay attention for this concept to the component of the electric field that is perpendicular to the surface, because that's the only one that can actually exit or enter the surface. The other one is just going to be skimming along parallel to it. Mm -hmm. So we need to update our concept here. We only take the component of the electric field that's perpendicular to the surface, and then we multiply that times the area. All right now, this is going to be a little bit tricky because um, here's what the mathematicians like to do. They like to invent a new vector called A, the area vector. And they say that A, the area vector, the magnitude of A is just the area of the face. Uh, and then they just make up a direction for this. They define this as pointing normal to the surface. Mm -hmm. Your instructor might have talked about this a little in class. The direction of A is normal to the surface and exiting the surface. So the A vector should point away out of the surface. And this is just a definition that they made up uh, because it, it turns out that it's useful mathematically to have this definition. So for example, well here, Here's what the A vector would look like for this surface. The A vector for this surface would look like this, pointing perpendicular out from the surface. And here's what the A vector would look like for this top surface. The A vector for the top surface will be pointing out, excuse me, from the top surface. And there's an A vector over here. pointing away from this left-hand face. And there's an A vector over here pointing down from this bottom face. So this is just a new definition for an A vector. Mm -hmm. So the A vector is normal to the surface. Well then, which component of the electric field should we focus on for the flux? Should it be the component of the electric field that is parallel to the A vector or that's perpendicular to the A vector? Parallel? Yeah, you can see here, the component here that is parallel to A is the one that's exiting the surface, because the A vector is perpendicular. Um, whereas over here, I've got an electric field that's perpendicular to the A vector, which means we should ignore this electric field, or this component of this electric field. So we could rewrite this formula like this. Instead of saying that we're taking the component of the electric field that's perpendicular to the surface, we could say we're taking the component of the electric field that's parallel to the A vector, and then multiplying that 
maybe I should put in a dot here now to show that now we're just focusing on the magnitude of A. Okay, this would be the magnitude of A, which is just the area. Remember, the magnitude of A is just the area of the face. This is supposed to be a little symbol for parallel. This is the symbol for parallel, and this is the symbol for perpendicular. Um, so I think this is unfortunate because students can easily start to get confused about whether we want the perpendicular component of E or the parallel. Well, it just depends what you're comparing it to. Yeah. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this makes more sense and is more straightforward. But uh, unfortunately, the, the official definition of electric flux is actually based on this idea. So it's important to be familiar with both of them. But well, probably the best thing to do is just always write. Don't just write perpendicular or parallel. Say who you're perpendicular or parallel to. Since we've defined the A vector to be perpendicular to the surface, well then when you're parallel to the A vector, you are perpendicular to the surface. Yeah. 